Father God, thank you for this morning. Thanks for everybody at our Garland campus, at our Louisville campus, at our Prosper campus, at our Dallas campus, at our, a part of our global family. Thanks for bringing us all together on today. Now, God, will you speak to every heart today, please? Um, wherever there are dry things in our lives, um, will you give us abundant life in those areas, God? Uh, will you do what only you can do? And that is to take the word of God and write it on our hearts so that we might naturally want to do the things that you want us to do. Thank you for our body of believers that are willing to hear the whole counsel of God, uh, no matter if it's popular or not. So now, God, enlighten us and refresh us. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. All right, if you don't mind, stand with me. Let's see what God's word has to say. Um, you're going to love the word of God today. So come on with me. Let's read the word of God. Um, look at your neighbor as you're getting up and say, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Look at the other one and say, you're blessed to sit by me today. <laughs> one of you say, sure enough, better believe it. You are blessed to be beside me. I didn't say arrogance. <laughs> let's read. Come on. We got a long way to go. Here we go. Everybody ready? If you're ready, say, let's go. Let's go. Good. At home, right in the chat. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Here we go. Uh, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he and sent me down in the middle of the, and it was full of. Contextually, um, God is taking Ezekiel into the middle of a valley, the valley of bones. What kind of bones? Verse 2. Verse 2, verse 2, verse 2. Let the scriptures tell us. He, 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 he caused me to pass among them around about and stop. Whenever you read the word behold, you must know that it means something is coming behind it that's shocking. So you need to say behold. <gasps> All right? So that's whenever you see the word behold or, or whenever you see the word low and low, you must say. <gasps> All right? So it's behold <gasps> and then low. <gasps> All right, come on. Let's see if we got it. Let's see if we got it. Let's see if we got it. He caused me to pass among them around about and behold. You got it? There were very many on the surface of the valley, and lo, they were very... My God, my God, my God, my God. So he went to this valley, and all he saw around him was dry bones. That's all that was there. And he's saying, God, why would you bring me into a valley and show me a vision of dry bones? That's because he's showing who Israel had become. They used to live in the land. You remember last week we talked about the Gibeonites and when they made a covenant with, with, uh, with uh, Joshua and uh, the children of Israel then went to fight and they were taking territory. They used to be in the land where things were great. But then they decided to serve some idols. And then God had to discipline them and kick them out of the land. Then they went to the land and started worshiping foreign idols. And before you think you don't do it, the devil has one plan to convince you that he does not exist, which means he will let you worship idols that you don't know you're worshiping. Let's see verse number three. Come on, let's see what it has to say. Verse three said, and he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, oh, Lord God, you know. In other words, God said, hey, man, hey, 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 hey Zeke, Zeke, can, can, these, can, can, these, can these bones live? Now, when God asks you a question, it's not because he don't know. He knows the answer. So what he's really doing is seeing if you know the answer. To which Ezekiel said, uh, 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 I don't know, I don't know. Verse 4. Here we go. Verse 4 says, again he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, 
Hear the word of the Lord. Lord have mercy. Now watch it. When you hear the word of God, when you know the word of God, you can speak to dry situations. But woe is the person who don't know the word, so you have nothing to say to your dry situations. Oh, it's going to get good. Next verse, verse 5. Verse 5, verse 5. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you that you may come to life. Huh. So you telling me, Zeke, you're going you to you cause breath to enter once you speak the words of God. Okay, well then let's see what happens. Next verse, verse 6, here we go. No, oh, stop, 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 stop. This means tendons. So don't pronounce it. You're going to get it wrong. Just say, I will put tendons. Everybody practice. I will put tendons. Good. Here we go. I will put tendons on you, make flesh grow back on you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you that you may come to life. And you will Listen to me, you're not feeling it yet, it's okay. Whenever God has you in a valley, any valley, what he wants you to come to the conclusion at the end of that valley is that I am the Lord. In other words, if you're in the valley, it's because he wants you to be in the valley so you know he is God and he can bring you out of that valley. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Next verse, verse seven, here we go. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a, take these out, take these out, take these out. There was a noise, there was a noise, there was a noise. And, and come on somebody, let me hear the rattling. When you speak God's voice, then all of a sudden stuff start to shake, stuff start to rattle, stuff start to get loose because God's going to connect some stuff that was not connected before. My God, my God, my God. There was a rattling and bones came together, bone to its bone. Lord have mercy. Verse number eight, here we go. And I looked and tendons were on them and flesh grew and skin covered them, but there was my God, my God, my God. Listen to me. Listen to me, please, ladies and gentlemen. The reason you need to know the word is because when you know the word, you can speak to dry things. But when you speak to the dry things, and God, when you speak in those words, and he starts to change stuff, you might not see what he's doing yet, but stuff is being worked on. Just because you don't see it, don't mean he's not working. Now, but then, stuff can get connected. Stuff can get connected. I didn't pick up the skull intentionally. Somebody would have run up out of here. Um, but stuff can get connected, y'all, but still have no life. So you speak in the word, stuff starts to get connected all over, but it still don't have no life. So he says, that's just part of the blessing to move you from being disconnected to being connected. But I ain't done with you yet is what he said. So let's see verse number nine. Verse nine says, then he said to me, prophesy to the, Lord have mercy. Same word that's used when, when, when the father spoke life into the dust he had formed in Genesis chapter one. Same thing. He says, I'm going to speak your spirit, my spirit into you. Then he says, prophesy son of man and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may come. God promises in John 10, 10, he says, I will give you life and life more abundantly. That's what he says. Next verse, verse 10. I, I'm, I'm going to stop at verse 11. You can't handle too much. And then he says, then he says, so I as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they came to life and stood on their feet and exceedingly bright. 
In other words, he's saying, I'm not just here to bring things together. I'm not just here to heal you for your sake. It's not about, he's not doing it for you. He's doing it for the glory of God. And he's creating an army out of us so we can take the kingdom of darkness up in here, up in here. So then why, 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 why? Last verse, some of you like, oh, I'm tired. Last verse. By the way, the truth of the matter is, I really can pray and dismiss y'all. Because the word of God has spoken already. And since it's been spoken, it's not returning. Unless he does something already in your heart. Lord have mercy. Just pray that I don't mess up what he said. That's the problem sometimes. The preacher mess up the goodness of the word of God. Last verse and then on this one you can sit. Here we go. Read this one slowly. <laughs> then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of... It. What's he doing? He's interpreting what the dream was, what the vision was. He's telling you what he's talking about. This is the whole house of Israel. Here we go now. Here we go. And... The reason we go to the vision of the dry bones is because Israel has lost their hope. There are no blue skies around. All they see is dark, dark, dark clouds. We are completely, you may be seated, you may be seated. My God, my God, my God. Look at the person next to you and say, the word is rich. Look at the other one and say, that's why you need to read it. The challenge before us today is what do you do when you're going through dry situations? What do you do when everywhere you look around you, all you see are dry bones? What do you do when you go to somebody beside you for help and all you get is the same dry bones? Because the people who are supposed to help you can't help you because they're in the same situation you're in. So everywhere around you, you go to your family members, drop out. Everywhere you go, darkness reigns, not a drop of light in store. You can't, everywhere you look, north, south, east, west, all you see is blackness because it's that dark. Let me see if I can put some flesh on it for you. You've, you have a wayward child that does not want to do, have anything to do with you or the God that you serve. You're now in a valley of dry bones. You have a financial situation that's gotten so bad, you don't know how you're going to pay your mortgage, your rent, the car note, or the light bill. You're in a dry bone kind of a situation. What do you do when you've been trying to have kids for a long time and you can't have kids? What do you do when you're a high school student and you're trying to finish college and you're wondering, is college really for me? And you're getting frustrated because you're not doing well and you're wondering if you should jump out. You're in a valley of dry bones. What do you do when you've been the one that's been um, waiting on getting married and it seems like every person that you attract ain't nothing but a fool? You're in a dry situation. What do you do when you're trying to restore a family relationship with a family member, but every time you try, they shut you down because they don't want to have anything to do with you. And you're trying to work on the relationship because you know the Lord wants you to do the right thing. And you initiate the first move, and they don't want to reciprocate by coming to the table. What do you do when you're in the middle of a valley called dry bones? What do you do when depression runs rampant in your family and now it's caught hold of you? And every time you come home, you want to you wanna get in the bed and pull the sheets over your head and you just wish nobody will disturb you ever. What do you do when you have suicidal thoughts more than you have hopeful thoughts? 
What do you do when you're at a job and you feel stuck and you don't like it and they're doing things you don't want them to do that you think violates your faith, but you're not sure you can leave because if you leave, you're not going to be able to pay the bills and you're in the situation and you're stuck and you don't know what to do. What do you do when you have to drag your family to church? The rest of them don't want to come. And you have to pull them over your shoulder every weekend morning and you have to pull them to church. If any of those situations or anything like those, you have an illness and the doctor is saying there's nothing they can do. You had cancer, it went into remission and it's now coming back. What do you do when you're in the middle of a dry situation? That's the question. That's where Ezekiel found these men and women. They're in the valley of dry bones. What do you do? First question you ought to ask yourself in those situations is, God, um, what could have caused this? For the children of Israel, that was their question. They, they, they're here. They're in the middle of the dry bones. And, and uh, our hope has been perished. We are completely cut off. How, how do you get cut off? How do you get where it's hopeless situation? The, the, the way you get there, ladies and gentlemen, is because without knowing it, you have erected at some level an idol and think that you find satisfaction from that idol and not from God. And so if you look in your notes, the first thing that leads us to, to one of these scenarios is that, number one, it's sin. It doesn't have to be sin, but it could be sin. That, that leads you there because there's something that has shown up that's now normalized, that is now repetitive, and that it is creating some space away from God. What do you do when you find yourself there? Number two is then after that is blindness. You know what blindness is. That's when, that's when you're not even aware that you're in a messed up situation. You ever been in a situation and it's so normalized you just think this is what everybody else do? And then it's not till somebody come from far away and say, what the heck are you doing in this mess? And it's as if you'd be like, mess? What are you talking about mess? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm better than 90% of the Christians out there. As if your job is to compare yourself to the other Christians. And not compare yourself to God. Blindness. That's when you don't even realize how dry you are. Okay, you, you, you're not feeling me. Um, um, just, just in terms of attitudinally. You ever seen somebody that's attitudinally dry? You go to the drive through and you're bumping your music, and you're like, um, uh, you know, whatever song you're singing, and you just love your little song, you're driving up to the drive through you fired up, you pumped up, and you say, hey, everybody, what a great morning it is. Good to see you this morning. May I have a number one, please? And I say, is that all? <laughs> You'd be like, joker, 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 hold on. Here's what, here's what dry people will do to you. Dry people will make you dry. Am I lying to somebody? You thought somebody that's so dry, you'd be, you'd be like, good morning, this is the day the Lord has made. They'd be like, oh, did he? <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, you'd be like, for real? Are, are you, which manager let you be at the drive through That manager should be fired because you have no business being at nobody's drive through when they come to you excited and you give them, huh? Can you repeat that? I'm not repeating it. That's when I got issues. I know, I got issues. I, I don't want to be patient and kind. But that's what happens when you're blind. That's what happens when you're blind to it. You see, if you're not careful, um, you will mock and laugh at the children of Israel. And you will suggest that they worship cows. Oh, yeah. And then you would, would your audacious self say, how could they worship cows? What's wrong with these people? They had Yahweh speaking to them, writing stuff on tablets. How could they get there? The same way you did. Because you're not even aware of some of the idols you worship right now. If you live in the burbs, us Sididi people, you don't even realize that whatever you give your attention to and your affection to, that's now become an idol. <laughs> 
So be careful because a lot of you, you go places and you praise hard, but you come to church and you don't want to praise God. You don't believe me. There's some of you that you go and hear your jam from Janet and you go off with Janet, but you come to church talking about, mm. Be careful that you don't let your affections go to things when it really is supposed to go to God. Be careful, fam. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Because the next generation will look at you and say, that's what they worship? They worship themselves? They worship their kids? They worship their music? They worship the boys? Cowboys, that is. <laughs> but when you come to church, we don't have to wake you up to go to a game. But we got to beg you to come to church. Is there? Hold on. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Number three. Let's, leave. let's move on from that one. Number three, doubt. Doubt. Here's what the enemy wants to do when you're in the middle of the valley. What he wants to do is to say, why would a good God let you be here? What he wants you to do is to question God. And he's doing everything he can to force you to say, how could a good God do this to you? When sometimes we've done it to ourselves. God had nothing to do with it. He just allowed it because of your cravings. But what happens is now we're doubting God. Will God ever come through for me? And then if that's not enough, you go to delay. When he delays the blessing, all of a sudden you say, God, why are you delaying that long? All of a sudden, God, why are you making me wait this long for the promotion? God, why are you making me wait this long for the mate? God, why are you making me wait this long for the kids? God, why do you make me wait this long to get healed? And all of a sudden now, you get mad at God because he's delaying what you think you rightfully deserve. So now, the satisfaction is not in God. The satisfaction is you getting God to do for you what you want. So now the satisfaction is God blessing you enough to not go through what you're going through. And all of a sudden, you wonder why you're in the middle of dry bones. Number four, then, is this whole idea of unchecked lust. <laughs> Woo! Let's talk about unchecked lust for a moment. Unchecked lust refers to what, what, what I'm going to call clout chasing. That's when you want somebody who is a little further up from you and you will chase them down to get close to them so some of what they have can rub off on you. When you want influence so bad, you go around befriending everybody who has millions of followers so that their fault, they will finally see you and give you some of what they got. And you wonder why you're lusting after influence. And, and, and being influential has now become your God. Speak, Holy Spirit, speak. For some of you, you're lusting after what people have and what they don't have. So now you see somebody with some really cool and about, oh my gosh, I wish my family could do that too. Well, I, I've told you this many times and I'll tell you again today. You really need to show everybody what a day that sucks looks like. When the bottom has fallen out, no, you turn the water on, no water coming out, you didn't pay the water bill, ain't no light in the house, and now you must, that's when you take a picture, click, hey guys. <laughs> light on, one, two, three, click, no light bill, forgot to pay it, no water, don't have enough money. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made. <laughs> That's when somebody's going to call you real. Not when every picture got a boat beside it. Every picture got a new car beside it. Every picture got some new kicks beside it. Every picture got you. you talking about, hey, this is us. No, that is you twice a year. Preach, pastor. Preach. Y'all just love to tell people a quarter of the story. Tell them the whole story. Show, just put a video in there and show them when, you, when you're cussing each other out. 
Yeah, not at a good day in the Edwards household. We cussing each other out today. Mm -hmm. Don't put us on no pedestal. We struggle too. That's what you need to put. Hashtag me too. You want a me too? Hashtag me too. I shouldn't have said that. Delete that from <laughs> Shouldn't have said that. My bad. <laughs> Let's move on. Thank you for leading me. Uh, next is pride. That's it. Pride. There it is. Pride. Next one is pride. That's when you and I get so arrogant that we think we don't need God. That's when we can fix the problem on our own. And you end up, you wonder why you're in the Valley of Dry Bones. Because you don't wait long enough for God to answer you. You think you know more than God. And then the last one, ladies and gentlemen, is what shows up. All the others show up because this one's lacking. Because you don't, you don't spend time depending on God. And because uh, you don't spend time in God's word. Then you end up in the situations you end up in today. But that's why we head down this path. Now, now ultimately... The real reason, which is what I really want to um, spend a little more time with, is why did we get here? We got here because of disobedience. And disobedience sometimes and oftentimes leads to distance, and distance then leads to dryness. It looks something like this. So now you have, you start with the disobedience. At some level, you have allowed something else to be God. You want something to be fixed so fast that you, you say, God, I'll never be happy if I don't have this fixed. So therefore, your satisfaction now is not in God. Your satisfaction now is in the thing you want from God. So that leads to distance. So now you're pushing them, him away when then that leads to dryness. Another way to say it is you have dysfunction, which creates a desperate situation, then which creates dry bones. So what the children of Israel did was since they didn't want to hang out with God anymore, because God, yeah, but other people have kings. We want a king too. Other people have these gods that they trust. When you're waiting too long, God, we just going to use their God to say if their God can help us out. We do the same thing. God, you're waiting too long. Let's go to a palm reader. God, you're waiting too long. Let's go to a fortune cookie. Let's go to a tarot card. Let's go to, and we go to everything else because, God, you're just not enough and you're too slow for us. Which is why we end up in... Valleys of dry bones. But why did you get there? Because there was distance between you and God. Where did the distance come from? Because there was some form of idol worship that took place. Because that's why you can't find your full satisfaction in God. If you can't find your satisfaction in a messed up situation saying, God, you alone are enough. And if nothing ever changes, at least I have you. Here's how David said it. David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you, I know this, you are with me. And if you are my satisfaction in the valley of dry bones, then I'm safe in the valley of dry bones because God is with me. So then, it is greed then and rebellion that oftentimes causes these bones to be dry. In the case of the children of Israel, it was absolutely that. And then until bones are dry, we are not willing to listen. That's the problem. He's been trying to get our attention before now. He's been trying to get our attention, but instead of going closer to God, we've been pushed further and further away from God. And so now God says, you haven't listened, so I've got to put you where there's no further place to go so that now I can get your attention. All I want is you to love me and me to love you. I already love you. All I want is your affections. Stop giving it to everybody else, and can you give me? I died for those affections. Turn your, turn your sermon notes over. So now we get to, how do we get out of here? How in the world do we get out of here? Um, Many of us have different pathways that we take to get out of here. For some of us, we say, well, God, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to do my very best, God, to, to, to come up with what I call a, a feeling. So what we say, in essence, is this. What we say is, God, I'm in the middle of the dry bones, so since I'm here, I need to feel my way out of here. I don't feel good. I got all kind of bones, the hip bone connected to the... Ankle bone connected to the thigh bone, connected to the finger bone. Connect I mean, we got bones everywhere, God. And, and, and I don't feel good. So, God, what do you want me to do? I don't feel good, God. And so what some of us try to do is we, we try to entertain ourselves out of it with feelings. 
So we try to say, well, I don't feel good. Let me bring some friends over and see if I can have a party in the middle of it. Or I don't feel good, let me go to a concert in the middle. And you think just going to this concert and seeing your faves is going to get you out of it. Here's the problem. You're going to go to bed again. And the next morning you get up, it was a temporary relief. Until the next morning, all the thoughts came flooding back in. Because entertainment does not, feelings will not drive you out of this situation. It just won't. Some of you go from feelings, then you decide, well, it's not feelings, so let me go to formulas. So that's when you say, all right, uh, I just need to take more yoga. Yoga every morning, ain't nothing wrong. I know some of you goes, oh, Lord, here we go, here we go. My, my wife does yoga. She does it every morning. Hot yoga, too. Where you get? Anyways, um, so, so, so formulaic things is not going to get you out of here. Uh, some people use formulas like, let, let me just read a verse a day, and that will get me out of it. No, that, that's Pharisaic in its orientation because what you're thinking is that religion is going to get you out. Religion don't get you out either. Ladies and gentlemen, formula or fortune cookies won't get you out of here. You can try it all you want. It won't get you out. But then some of us who think they're really, really holy, now you say, um, what's going to get me out of here is, is God, you got to show me a floodlight. So God, you got to show me, open the floodlight up and show me the pathway to get out of here. I don't want just a little bit. I want to see the whole thing. Because unless you show me how the pathway to get all the way out, God, I'm not going. And I'm not going, God, because I don't want you to ask me to do something hard and then me not want to do it. You got to show me the end of it. Because if so, I'm not going to apologize to my wife. I'm not going to apologize to my boss. I'm not going to apologize to my employees unless you show me that when I apologize, they're going to act right. If not, I'm not going down that path because you got to show me. Well, then since you are God, get yourself out of it. But God said, I'm not a floodlight. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. No, no, no. That's not what he says. He says, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to, and instead of it being a floodlight, I'm going to show you your very next step that you should take. God says, I'm going to give you the next right thing for you to do. One thing. Do the one thing, which is the next right thing. That's all I'm going to show you. I'm not showing you the next five right things, just the next one. Then he's going to say, here, go the next one. Do the next right thing. The, my Bible says it this way. My word is a lamp unto your feet. The next right thing. Too many of us wait for the next ten right things. God says, I'm not giving you that because you can't handle all ten. I just want you to do the next one. Act right the next decision you make. Do the godly thing the next right thing. You need to apologize. Do the next right thing. After you apologize, you need to humble yourself. Do the next right thing. Because if he tells you one and you see number two, you ain't going to do number two. He's going to say, this ain't going where I want it to go. So therefore, I'm not going to go down this path. That's why your only assignment is to do the next right thing. Look at your neighbor and say the next right thing. Look at the other one and say, he said the next right thing. That's all he's asking you to do. Now watch the text and watch what happens. All right? Now, you got to remember, why is this so very important? Um, uh, somebody's going to ask me and try to get this flashlight. Don't worry about it. Just leave it alone and don't come up here afterwards. You're not getting it. All right. So, you don't realize this yet, but all my atheists, come here. Everybody who don't, if you're online too, if you don't, there ain't no God, there ain't no God, quit it. We take 23,000 breaths every day. Every day, 23,000. Every day. The word Yahweh, without the vowels, is synonymous with the sound of breathing. So every time you take a breath, without even knowing it, you're saying his name. 
because you take the vowels out. Got, you know, let me get a little context. You got to remember, they couldn't write the name of God because, because they, they considered it so holy. How could a frail human write the name of God? So they would never, the name of God doesn't have vowels in it, but we put vowels in it. So we're not actually saying his name. We can say Yahweh because when you say Yahweh, it has vowels in it. That's not really the name because the name don't have vowels in it. So when you write just the vowels and when you pronounce it in the Hebrew form, then it gives you the, 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 the same phraseology of you God, is what you do. So every single day, 23,000 times, you recognizing who God is and you're worshiping him even though you don't know it. Why is that significant? Because when you're in the valley and you're getting mad at God, you still need to know he still gave you your next breath that you're going to take. Even when you're mad and the devil convinced you that he ain't a good God, the fact that you take your next breath ought to tell you, lift your hands up to the Lord and praise his holy name. That's very important. Let's get to the text now. So now here's what he says. Now here's what he says. Now, now the question becomes, in the text, he gives us three parts. Quickly, let's get through this. In the text, he says, first is the dry bones. Then it's the bones that are connected. Then it's the bones that are an army. The first one, dry bones, is the person that don't know Jesus. The second one, it was when they start getting connected, is the person that know God now, but they got to grow and mature and get rid of the old thinking they used to think. And then the third phase is when now you are an army of God and he's releasing you into the world. Watch what happens. The text says that first of all, get your drumsticks out now. The text says that first of all, he started, God says, I want you to speak to those dry bones. Speak into them. I want you to say my word to them. And the moment he said it, then there started to be a Rattling. Come on, everybody. Rattle, 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 rattle. And as this rattling kept going on, before you knew it, he starts speaking into it. And as he's speaking into it, dry bones start rising up. Dry bones started coming together. And all of a sudden, stuff that was not connected started getting connected because the word of God was spoken into it. For the glory of God. Listen to me. Listen to me. Whenever you're in a dry situation, you must know the word of God. When you know the word of God, you can speak the word of God. When you speak the word of God to dry situations, things that are dead begin to get life. In the name of Jesus. It's not done there. Because they still had no breath. This represents the person who knows and is beginning to know God, but have so much baggage they need to work it out. They need to be mature enough to work it out. So they need to go get the help, which I have a class called Finding Freedom from the Baggage that You Brought into Your Faith. That's why. So, so the, the worst thing you can do is send somebody who has just been connected in to start preaching. Not even preaching, but into any major ministry. Because the moment somebody makes them mad, they're going to do what they did in the world. Which is why you got to make sure they can start serving, but not at a high capacity. Because at a high capacity service, people get on your last nerve. And you got to know how to handle them when they do. Oh, I'm preaching today. Now, 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 now. Now, after that, after the bones come together, he says there's, a, there's another iteration. When he told Ezekiel to then speak breath into those bones. No, that's a whole different story. So let's go rattle again and let's see what happens when he starts speaking breath into these dry bones. Because after that, then the dry bones that were dead, disconnected, all of a sudden they start to dance. And before you know it, now you have dry bones dancing because all of a sudden now you got stuff in them and life has come into them. And he has given you life and given it to you more abundantly. So now you have a mission and now you have a purpose and now you can unleash what God is calling you to do. By the way, the people up top ain't, ain't doing theirs. 
This, they say, no, you, you're immersive. This is not an entertainment show. You need to do this. Just, just the people of Tacoma. Everybody, if you're online too, just get two forks, a fork and a knife. Do it online. Here we go, everybody. Just nobody, nobody down here. Just everybody up top. Here we go, family. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come. That's, what, that, that's when God starts to move. When you speak his word into dead things, what used to be dry now starts to dance. Now, let me help you out. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. Don't you miss this. Whenever he gives you something like that, and God is raising up an army. Listen to me now. That means he's given you an assignment. Because if you're part of an, an army, everybody in the army has an assignment. Which means, listen now, whenever he blows his breath and his spirit into you, he's given you an anointing for that assignment. Listen, listen, listen. So that means if you are here and you're not fulfilling your, your, your assignment, it means your anointing is only for your assignment. Which means the protection of your anointing only comes when you are pursuing your assignment. Okay, you're not feeling me. David, come here, David. He's supposed to go to battle. But he decides he ain't going to battle. He decides, hey, man, the rest of y'all go, go beat up them dudes, and then let me stay home. Whenever you stay home and you don't go fight a battle, then all of a sudden you get bored. When you get bored, you go into bondage, and all of a sudden you start doing stuff you have no business doing. David, come here. What the heck you doing on the balcony? You should be in a war. But David, you on the balcony. That means you're looking at stuff you have no business looking at because you should be in war fighting somebody else. But you have became bored and then you became bond in bondage. So now all of a sudden you got to look at your girl. And I wonder how many people here should be on assignment for the glory and kingdom of God. But instead of an assignment, you're running down everything else except what God's called you to do. By the way, America, stop, stop, stop. By the way, America, be careful. The reason why no country stays great forever is because when you're, all your needs are being met, you're going to start doing stuff that you have no business doing. You see, when you go to poor countries, all they're trying to do is feed their families. They don't have time to be messing around with creation. They don't have time to be messing around with nothing else because they're hungry. They need to feed them. They need, they need covering over their head. That's all they have time for. But the wealthier you get, Collin County City people, which includes me, the wealthier we get, listen, the more time you have to mess around with God's creation, to figure out how you're going to get pleasure other ways. Apart from the ways God has called you and designed you for. So all of a sudden now, instead of doing what God's called you to do, you get in bondage and want everybody else to follow your bondage. Because, listen, Satan has a mob. God has an army. Satan's mob. What Satan wants is for you to join his mob. How does he do that? Get you to not serve in God's kingdom so that you are bored, so that you will join his, his people who are in bondage and can do nothing else but serve him. Am I preaching to somebody here today? My God, my God, my God. So here's how you get over it and then I'm done. Number one, let's go through these real quick. Number one says, um, you have to recognize every time in the valley, it's an invitation. Every time, it's an invitation. Number two, you have to recognize that it's a time of worship. Why is it a time of worship? Why you got to spend time of worship? Because you have to shift your affection and your attention away from the thing that's getting it now and shift it to what God, who God is and what he's done for you. If you don't do that, then your affection and your attention is going to something else. It might be going to your kids and there's an appropriate amount of attention and affection that you go there, but not not to the degree that you miss God completely. So be careful. Nobody has to tell you to wake up for the game. Nobody has to tell you to get your kids ready for the game. Why is it so hard to come to church and get the kids ready for church? But when it's a game that they got to play in, you there 30 minutes before. Oh, I'm preaching to Colin County now. I know I am. Because I'm one of them. Oh, yeah, you better believe my kids going to their game 30 minutes before. Because if they don't, they ain't starting the game. You come to church, you coming in here. When the service, when the preacher get up, you come in. And you say, well, leave me alone. I mean, I, you better be glad you got me here. No, 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 no. 
Not when you serve in Yahweh, God, I'm not. Because he deserves your best, not your what's left. Oh, I know I'm going to get some emails today. Lord, have mercy. Mercy! Next one, you got to spend time in the Word. I got to go. You got to spend time in the Word. Now, let me do this real quick, then I got to go. Um, 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 there's a difference between being transformed by the renewing of your mind, and God, Ezekiel 36, 36, gives us a brand new heart. The heart he's given us is saturated with truth that you need to learn through your mind so that your mind will inform and be in partnership with your heart so that you naturally want to do what God wants you to do. All right. Uh, when you have a drunkard and a drunkard is under the influence, what he or she does is all of a sudden they can't walk straight. So about like, hey, hey. <laughs> and they can't walk straight. Here's why they can't walk straight. Because they're under the they can't help but to do that. The more your heart is saturated with God's word. The more your heart has so been immersed with God's word, then you can't help but do right. You, you, the, the idea of you doing something that's against a holy God is so foreign to you that your immediate instinct is always to do what Jesus would do. What I want to know is where the army people are whose instincts are just God-centered so that anything that does not bring glory to God, I want to have nothing to do with it. That's why you need time in God's word. It continues as we wind down. That's why you pray out loud, not to your dry situations. Because when you pray out loud, it speaks life into it. That is why you're in a community. You're in a community so that people join you in the community and help you walk out of that community. And so when you're in the mess and they're not in the mess, they can come for you in the valley of dry bones and say, we're not staying here. We might join you here to get you out. And so we're going to walk with you until you get out of the valley of dry bones. And then lastly, 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 you journal about it. You know why? To remind yourself. And to remind the next generation of what God did for you when you were in the dry bones. Now listen, um, let me, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Um, I love this movie called The, Par the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Anything Caribbean, you know, I'm going to love that. So, uh, it's The Pirates of the Caribbean. In this movie, ladies and gentlemen, um, the, the two people are after some treasure. They want some treasure. So they're going after this treasure. And then <clears throat> Capo told the other guy that, hey, man, here's where the treasure is. He shouldn't have told him that. But anyways, tell him where the treasure is. So he told him where the treasure is. And then he said, well, I'm going to leave the Capo out, and I'm going to go get the treasure myself. What he did not know was that whoever gets the treasure <laughs> gets the curse. So he went after the treasure. He got the treasure. He's been longing for it, yearning for it. It's the thing he so badly wants. He gets it and he takes it. And now he, he, he thinks, I've got what I really want. Only to realize that every time when the moon shines, they look like skeletons. Because they're really dead men walking. I wonder if there's anybody here running after something that it has a curse attached to it. And when you get it, you're going to think, I have arrived! Only to, only to realize that when you arrive, you arrive with something that you really wanted, but it has a curse on it. Be careful, family. Be careful that what you're running after and saying, God, I don't need you, I need this. Be careful that it don't have a curse on it. So the, the, the story goes, and the story says, hey man, um, when he got it, the only way to get out and to undo the curse... Is if there's bloodshed. No bloodshed, curse still upon you. So what he said was, okay, that means, but whose blood? Well, the blood of the captain. No captain's blood, no curse reversed. So now he's got to find a captain. Problem is, Kappa ain't there. Kappa dead. So now he has to find the captain's son. Because it's the same bloodline. <laughs> If you can't preach this, get out of town. So what happened is he said, well, I got to find the captain's son and get the captain's son to spill some of his blood on the treasure that I wanted so badly. So I got to give back the treasure, get the blood to be sprinkling over it so that the curse can be reversed. 
Well, Lord have mercy 2,000 years ago. All God's people had a curse on them. And until the father sent his son and had his son hang on a cross, spill his blood so that his blood could cover your sins, until then the curse could not be reversed. But because it was, you can have life and have life more abundantly. My brothers and sisters in Christ today, don't go after something that has a curse associated with it that you never even knew. Make sure that the desires of your heart, the affections of your heart, are for Yahweh, are for Jesus, and nothing else. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. Heavenly Father, will you be with us? Wherever there are dry bones in this house today, will you please speak life into them? God, wherever there are people in here today that are frustrated with their current situation of the valley of the dry bones, will you please, in the matchless name of Jesus, resurrect those bones? Will you connect those bones, put flesh on those bones, breathe life into those bones so we can get up and become the army of God and fight against the kingdom of darkness. Speak to us individually. Customize this word for every last one of us. Remove the distractions so we know what God is saying to us individually today so we can walk out the truth of the word. And then when we've made that decision, release us into a dark world Call their home into a dark world. Call their jobs into a dark world. Call, call where, where we go to school so that we can shine the love of Jesus into dark places. Transform us from the inside out so you will receive all the glory and honor we pray in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Come on, will you give God a round of applause for me, everybody? Yeah.